This speech is entirely Amelina's fault. <laughs> I wanted to get that out there so that if this goes terribly wrong, there is someone else to blame. Coming into Brooks, I had no idea who I was, what I liked, or how my mind works. I still don't understand that last one, but I'm a lot closer now than I ever was. I'm not sure I'll ever understand myself completely, but there are a few things that I have figured out. Number one, I don't go to dances. That doesn't mean I don't like to dance. Dance was my life before Brooks. I danced four times a week for 13 years. I even competed numerous times each year. Can I show you? <laughs> this is me at age three uh, in my first ever recital. And that's me and my sister Emma a few years later. Freshman and sophomore year, I'd somehow found myself at dances anyway, thinking that maybe this time it would be different. I finally figured out that I'm an introvert when at a dance, I couldn't take it anymore. I was surrounded by smiling faces, loud voices, and pulsing music. I felt entirely alone, despite being surrounded by friends. Tromi would say that she lost her dancing buddy, but I simply figured out that dances didn't make me happy. I would rather be playing games or sitting and talking in the dorm with whoever happened to be on duty until 1 a.m. Second. I am crazy competitive, typically against myself. This is evident through my sporting endeavors. Despite having a few varsity letters and playing sports for all but two seasons at Brooks, I do not consider myself an athlete. Yet, somehow I managed to be captain of the girls' cross-country team this fall. I'm not nearly the fastest runner on our team and am, in fact, probably the slowest. <laughs> However, this has never stopped me from getting in my head about going faster or getting up another hill. I frequently found myself hyperventilating if I couldn't run faster despite the fact that I wasn't going to pass anyone, nor was my time going to impact the team. I get in my head and it stops me from succeeding. This happens to me during the crew season as well. On the machines, we get instant feedback on how hard our last strokes were. This causes a downward spiral where I take a weak stroke that shatters my confidence. Then I get upset and do even worse, the bad kind of positive feedback loop. While I have not figured out how to prevent this vicious cycle, I am now aware of it and have a bit bigger understanding of how to stop it. Number three, I have a weirdly selective memory. I have so many fragments of memories. I never get to choose what I remember. It's just random. I remember sitting in that low tree by the girls' third soccer field, reading a book while watching the game through the branches. I remember Naima getting stuck in the tree across from the dining hall and Thorndike screaming at her to get down. I remember sitting in the library with Toby and Lyndon, arguing about what parts of the universe each of us claimed getting into obscure theoretical physics that none of us actually understood more than vaguely. I remember sitting with Amelina, staring at the second floor of the library, trying to figure out how in the world attack fell on us again. Where did they come from? Is there someone to blame? Why were we being attacked? Why did this only happen when it was Amelina and I? I still don't have answers. I remember finding a spider in my pillow sophomore year and having to sit outside my room because the spider disappeared and I didn't know where it went and that was somehow worse. I remember rolling my ankle the first weekend of freshman year and having to hop around on one foot that Saturday night. I remember learning that that weird tall kid who rides a unicycle has the same bizarre taste in books that I do on a three hour bus ride back from hell. I, I mean, uh, preseason sophomore year. But there are so many things that I don't remember, namely people's names. Sorry about that. Uh, but so many fun moments with friends that I wish I remembered. Number four, there is no filter between my thoughts and emotions and my face. Any feeling that I have is painfully obvious to whoever happens to be around me. Fortunately, I consider myself an optimist and am happy most of the time. However, when I'm stressed, upset, or one tiny thing has finally sent me over the edge, the entire world knows. 
This leads to unfortunate situations in public spaces. Once when walking down Main Street, a student said the usual, hey, how are you? And I responded with the obligatory, good, you? As we crossed paths. Not a minute later, I had the beginning of this same interaction with Mrs. Stewart. But instead of responding, I burst into tears in the middle of Main Street, right in front of Mr. Packard's house. While that wasn't my finest moment, I cannot remember what made me cry that day. So it must have all turned out well. <laughs> uh, and I lost my place, lovely. Um, while I am still extremely see-through when it comes to my emotions, I have slowly figured out how to limit the number of public outbursts and deal with stress through sports and sleep rather than bottling it up. That and the fact that this is senior spring have made my life relatively stress-free, excluding the current stress of speaking in front of the entire school. <laughs> Number five, I would have been a completely different person if I had not come to Brooks. Maybe I would have had a job or a car. I probably would not spend as much time as I do playing board games, and I would have been even more attached to my phone if possible. And I definitely would never have played squash, attempted to ride a unicycle, rode, or learned half as much. Brooks, from my first days on campus, felt like home. I felt comfortable enough here to figure out who I am and what makes me happy. Brooks has been a journey. That sounds super cliche, and I'm trying so hard not to fall into cliches, but it's true. My first four years, my four years here have been quite a trip. My freshman year, I didn't even speak to most of the people who I'm lucky enough to call my closest friends. Most of them, I'm sure, thought I was strange, or maybe that was just Lamy. That may have to do with the fact that I was mostly by myself and always had my nose in a book, even while walking across campus. I'm shocked I never ran into something. Either way, Brooks has been a safe place for me to try to new things and figure out who I am to prepare me for my next steps in college. I'm going to finish this speech with a part of an essay I wrote for college. This was the inspiration for me to give a senior speech in the first place. I have a table in the library. I don't actually own it, but sometimes it feels that I'm there more often than I'm in my own dorm room. It's a place where I know I can get work done and can most often find some of my closest friends. Each day, I walk into the library, turn right, and make my way down the hall past the Mac lab. Sometimes I can see heads peeking over the shelves ahead, and a smile will take over my face as I plop down into my seat, my back to a large window facing the glass walls of the Mac lab. Like most, I find that I'm a creature of habit. I enjoy returning to my seat day after day, week after week. It is in this place where I've written college essays, tirelessly studied for tests, and spent time talking with friends about Marvel movies, books, theoretical physics, summer, and basically anything to distract us from actually being productive. I've built a small community around me at this table. The students that I tutor know to find me at my table. My classmates and friends know that if I'm in the library, I can be found in the same chair every time. Next year, I will have to find a new chair at a new table, and I will meet some new friends who will always know where to find me. So thank you, Brooks, for my table in the library and for the opportunity to learn more about myself. I will miss this place next year. Thank you.